Have you ever been in a fight where you're locked onto a target only to take a hit which throws off your sight and blurs your screen so much that you end up losing? Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we'll be answering the question of whether Tarkov has too much aim punch and whether it can be improved. There's been plenty of discussion about this mechanic recently and the biggest criticism is that in its current state it can take all the agency away from the player leaving no room for counterplay. What this means is that the combination of effects that are present when you get hit at the moment can lead to being totally Totally unable to locate the source of the shots or have a chance to aim your weapon properly to defeat your opponent. But we don't want zero aim punch either. The system should punish the player taking shots and make it harder to return fire, but not to the point of making it impossible. A skilled player should be able to make adjustments through the aim punch, which of course would be harder than if you're not getting shot at all. Let's break aim punch down into three major effects. Firstly, your weapon aim point, which moves when you get shot, which is independent to number two, which is your camera that also moves. and this this tends to be bigger than the weapon move as well as a rotational change on the screen. Finally, effect number three is a blur that is added to the frame for a certain period of time. Now, you can make the argument that the aim and camera shifts are too high when you get shot, but for me, point number three is the most important one. The blur, and more specifically the way that blur gets applied to the frames shown on your monitor, is a significant contributing factor to the feeling of randomness in firefights when two players are shooting at each other. While the camera and weapon movement section of aim punch swings these out to a position and then gradually moves them back in, the blur effect kicks in straight away and is literally either on or off. If you get shot in a single instance, the effect lasts for around 25 frames, which is just over 400 milliseconds. Just to give some context on how long this actually is to experience in game terms. For pings or latency, once you start getting over about 100, this is usually deemed to be fairly noticeable. When Tarkov desync is at its worst these days, such as dying behind walls, this is typically about 250 to 300 milliseconds. So 400 milliseconds of blur is a really big deal, especially when you can be shot again rapidly multiple times. Critically though, the blur effect is exactly the same throughout the time that it is in effect. There is no fade out or anything like that which is present for the camera and aim bumps as they gradually move back to where they started and I think that this strongly affects how bad it feels to experience. Let me show you an example here that I posted to Twitter a while ago. Unfortunately, I don't have the actual base clip anymore, but this is a close range firefight that I had with another player using the UMP where I got hit. You can see the good old blur in full force and I've drawn on the center of the screen using two lines to demonstrate that I am technically on target, at least as far as you can tell for a point shooting purpose. I was astounded at the time that I didn't kill the guy and it was only on review that I could see the bullets sparking against the metal in the background through the blur when slowed down and checked frame by frame, which showed me where the rounds were actually going. In the moment, this all happens in a fraction of a second, of course, so with the blur, I simply didn't stand a chance seeing the impact and making the necessary adjustments because it just isn't possible to see it in that period of time. Here's a practical example from an offline raid against a scab with a shotgun. Bearing in mind I'm wearing the Class 5 Osprey rig from Peacekeeper, which has both thorax and arm protection, the scab shoots me three times fairly quickly, all on armoured areas. From the time of the first impact to the end of the blur effect after shot three, the number of clear frames on my monitor in this time is 4 and the number of blurred frames is 62. So 94% of the time during the scab shooting our screen is at maximum blurriness, which sounds like a lot. I was interested to test out a few different models of aim punch because without actually seeing it in practice it's very difficult to know what this feels like, focusing primarily on the blur effect. So what I did was I took this clip and I tried to replicate it in Premiere Pro. This is my editing software that I use to make all of these videos and this demonstrates what actually happens, which ended up looking something like this. It's not completely identical, but cranking up the fast blur effect in Premiere gets you to about the same as where it is in game. And to me at least, the length and the full effect of the blur is the biggest issue. By the time that you get shot again, you've only just left the blur effect from the first one and sometimes not even that. So leaving the camera recoil as it is, I tried to scale down the blur from its maximum value to zero over different lengths of time because I suspected that this might make it feel better to play. In this first one, I kept the blur length fairly long and used the same starting blur amount, but reduced it down to zero gradually over 20 frames. This way, you do start to get some clarity on your screen in between shots, with the blur still being fairly significant at the beginning. Next, I shortened the time down even more to 10 frames instead for the blur going from full to zero. This gives a very small period of time where the blur is active, but it goes away very quickly and it is quite diluted compared to the original effect. While I personally think that this might be the best overall, it is possibly a step too far. 
So finally, I experimented with actually increasing the initial blur, but keeping a relatively short time frame for it to reduce over, in this case 15 frames, which is halfway between the other two tests that we did. This is still 250 milliseconds in total, but after the first 100 or so, the effect is really starting to go away, so again, it's still an improvement on the existing model in the game right now. Let me know what you think in the comments as to which you prefer, but I think that some variety of the final model could be a nice adjustment to get to where we want to be. You still feel the effect of getting shot, and it still punishes you, but giving a graduated blur significantly increases the ability of the player to try to make some adjustments and fight back. About the rest of the aim punch mechanics, perhaps they could tone down some of the effects of the aim bump and the camera bump, especially when absorbing hits via armor, but with the blur the way it is, I'm honestly not sure right now that it's even necessary. CZTL did a good video on a few of these other effects, and in his testing, both caliber and location being shot did actually matter, with the arms giving the most aim punch and the more powerful calibers also delivering a higher aim punch too, which is probably fair enough. But the difference with and without armor was so close that it was impossible to distinguish between them with certainty, which to me is just too punishing in the armoured case, especially as we head into the armour plate rework. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.